I'm the youngest daughter of Kim Groves. My name is Jasmine Groves. I'm the nephew of Kim Groves, um, Pop Sporter, and be rocking with Video Wayne to tell our story. Brown skin with light brown eyes. I got the phone on and the radio. After it's done, go straight uptown and call me. I actually answered the phone. And when I picked up the phone, I'm like, hello. And the lady said, Kim just got shot, I think she did. And that's when everybody went out the door, and when we got out there, she was laying in the street. How old were you at the time? 12, I made 13 the next day. And my grandfather took her brains and went, bought, threw it in the levee. Took her brains? Yeah, her brains was knocked out of her head. So he went to the levee, and you know, I guess that little ritual thing, you set her free. I have no problem with it being told if it's told truthfully, because it's never Kim Groves remembered. It's Lynn Davis and the lady, Kim Groves, who right. killed. Can you tell the world who, who, who Kim Groves was? And what she meant to her community? And what, what she meant to you guys as well? Kim Groves was a protector. A warrior, like, a queen. She was the neighborhood mom. Hmm. I don't care who you were. If you did wrong, she was gonna bust your butt and bring you to your mom. If you did right, she was gonna say good job and celebrate. But she watched over everyone. She is not my kids and those kids. These are my kids. This is my neighborhood. This is my people I protect. They went to school together so they knew each other from around the way. You say they tell me school? My Auntie Kim and Lynn Davis. Lynn Davis. Went to school together? Yeah. Wow. So they knew of each other. Okay. Him and her went to Lawless together. Okay, that's high school? Yeah. yeah. My mama was kinda, you know, Tomboy, she just was Kim. He liked her in high school. She did not like him. He was a, a gullible little somebody everybody picked on. I really think that was his motive for being a police officer. Now I got the power. What you gonna do? Yeah. And just so happened, now these years later, and I run into her again. Yeah. I already don't like her. She's been in my way. She is the only one around this neighborhood have the knowledge and know how to talk against me, what I, to stop me from doing what I want to do, you know. He used to have the neighborhood boys taking their stuff and putting their head under the car. She walk up, let them turn up. That ain't gonna go around here. So she was his, you know, problem anyway. And to tell you the truth, Lynn was so notorious. Lynn would have killed anyone who got in his way. I mean, truly, anyone who got in his way. In 94, that was the murder capital in the city. And um, you had a lot of money being flooded in with the crack era. Um, um, a lot of people was really just coming in the new flood of putting their hands on extreme, extreme amount of cash and extreme, extreme amount of um, of guns and artillery. So uptown, downtown, anywhere in the city around that time, New Orleans was Brutally vicious. In the early 90s, crime soared in New Orleans on the streets and inside the police department. My cousin Corey, which was my auntie Kim on his son, they was hustling around there and supposedly been paying in Davis draft. They got to the point where like, we're not about to do it. So they had a little scuffle and they went to running. My cousin Corey got away. Um, in the midst of that, Lynn Davis beat one of the twins so bad he pistol whipped him and knocked all his goals out. My cousin Corey went home and told my auntie Kim. My auntie Kim come around that buck and get him off the ground. Da, da. My auntie had a, had a mouth on her. You, if, trust you, me, you go know. Kim Groves was a young mother of three who'd filed a complaint against a cop for brutalizing a teenager. That evening she went up there to Eternal Fest and she made the report. Now, from my understanding, it take almost 72 hours before a cop know about mm -hmm. this police, re you know, this report being on them. He knew by the time she got home. The FBI had Officer Davis under surveillance for drug activity and actually recorded him setting up the assassination of Kim Grove. And if he be suspended, how can I detail or protect my shipment? So he had an idea of if I get rid of her, you know, that'll go away and I can continue doing what I'm doing. You had high profile federal agents already investigating him. Mm -hmm. So in the midst of that investigation, her murder happened. Whatever um, mindset she was in, he had to know. Um, it ain't gonna stop until her mission is complete or uh, my 
mine is. So we gonna have to get rid of her immediately. Man, that who's standing out there right now with black jeans, okay. a black coat, and a bitch brown skin with light brown eyes. I got the phone on and the radio. After it's done, go straight uptown and call me. We gonna see if she went around up there around roughly three o'clock in the afternoon. She was killed at 10.30. He, he found out she was there. He was like, yeah, rock a bye, baby. And it just tickled him pink. <laughs> from what I'm hearing from the people, uh -huh. it's definitely a done deal. The, the day that happened, where were you guys? How you got the news? Were you, were you actually there? Um, it happened on the corner from our house. Um, we live in the middle. It happened like one, two, three houses down on the corner. So we was actually inside when it happened. And like right after it happened, could have been like five minutes later. I actually answered the phone. And when I picked up the phone, I'm like, hello. And the lady said, Kim just got shot, I think she did. So I'm thinking this, I'm like, hello? So I just say, my mom, um, they say my mama just got shot, she did. And that's when everybody went out the door and when we got out there, she was laying in the street. Now, how old were you at the time? 12, I made 13 the next day. And, and, and how did you take that? What was going through your mind? She was actually planning my birthday party. She sang happy birthday, and she walked out the door. October 13th, I was a 12-year-old child. October 14, 1994, I had to make decisions. So, um, I don't know, you know when something just seemed like a dream at the moment? Like, surreal. You, yeah, you're going through it, but you don't think you're actually there. So, I mean, we sat out there to, um, took the ambulance like 45 minutes. To get there? Before they got there. Um, we sat out there with her. My grandfather took her brains and went, broke, threw it in the levee. Took her brains? Yeah, her brains was knocked out of her head. So he went to the levee and, you know, I guess that little ritual thing, you set her free. So we knew she wouldn't, wasn't gonna make it. And when the ambulance did got there, like, Ten minutes later, they had them call it a, you know, say she had them passed. You, you said you were 12, did you see it? Did you actually go and look at her? Yeah, we sat there with her. We sat there with her. Um, my piece I got from her as, you know, my grandmama raised us very spiritual. We're not, not righteous, just, not religious, just righteous. And I sat there with her and as I looked in her eyes, she said I saw her. But she had to go. So we sat there with her until they came. Probably like around 7 o'clock in the morning. Things was kind of still fresh. You still had feds and stuff out there. They were still outside. I can remember all three of my cousin's facial expressions. Um, her oldest son, he was sitting on the crate like this, just staring into space. He didn't move. Corey didn't move, didn't do anything. Um, somebody was holding you, Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Consoling you. Mm -hmm. um, Stephanie was over the fence. I woke up <clears throat> to my mother on the floor, stretched out, hiding and screaming. Um, my grandma had to get us dressed for school. But as we walking, the brains wasn't cleared all the way up yet. So it was still yeah, the fragments. Yeah, and everything still was down there. Still fragments. Even once we got home from school, it was still... Not as much, but still just the blood stains and the spots. And I don't think we even knew how to normalize as, as far as me. I didn't even really understood that like that, but I understood something was wrong, like extremely wrong. How old were you at the time? I was seven. Me, now, I kind of turned tragic into triumph because every year I have to prepare for a memorial and then figure out how to celebrate a birthday. So I don't celebrate my birthdays. I just turned the whole memorial into our celebration together. So he has the death penalty now? Yeah, he's awaiting the death penalty. Does he actually have, does he, does he have a date? Did they give him a date yet? No, he goes back and forth. Like, um, they denied him for the last time. So I don't know if he can ever go again. Um, I thought it was once you get to the fourth circuit or whatever, but He's been back and forth, back and forth. You know, when you get these new lawyers, they go to filing these new things. And But he was denied this last time, so I don't know if he can go up again for it. But 
for my knowledge, that's what he's doing. He's awaiting the death penalty.